Welcome back. As you can see, there's uh, been a few changes around here. Got a few things done. And uh, I guess I'll start off with the most important thing. Um, you probably seen the last video. Just uh, some clips of what I've been doing, hauling around some stuff, you know. Um, but I guess what I owe you is an explanation for the video before that that was made a long time ago. And uh, it's not that I was taking a break. I mean, uh, it's not that anything really happened that made me not make a video. But that last video, you've seen the... Uh, man, it's been so long. Was it a... 2000, 2001 GMC Jimmy with the 4.3 that we all love and hate. Um, so basically that video was just kind of saying, you know, what what am I going to do with this one? It runs so good, the AC works. Um, so obviously you don't really see it around and uh, it's because it's not here and it didn't didn't meet the boot or anything boot didn't get to it but um, yeah I did what you know I said I would not do anymore and uh, I helped someone out that needed a car and I decided that you know not only me, but me and my wife kind of decided. We really, we drove it around. I mean, we we took that thing out and went and got lunch and coffee and cruised around with the AC on on the hot days. Threw the dogs in there. It wasn't a bad vehicle, but it wasn't really us, you know. Because, you know, we drive stuff like this, you know. And uh, it really wasn't needed around here plus we already got a plethora oh yeah I said plethora of vehicles to drive so just decided don't need it and uh, like I said someone I knew they needed a car you know to drive around basic transportation so What they did not care about was the fact that it had catalytic converters on it. And um, they said, you know, I don't care about that. I don't have to pass emissions up here in that year, so um, don't care. So I ended up chopping those right off and uh, doing a little, little cat delete like I do the best. Welding in a couple of pieces, and uh, I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to get it perfect. But, you know, because you can't get to the top, you know, all the time welding those pipes. But I got it pretty good, a little bit of a leak. Um, and uh, they were happy with it. Basically, I just made my profit off the cats and uh, just got my money back that I paid for the Jimmy. So it worked out pretty good. And... That way I wasn't selling it for a lot of money in case, you know, because I didn't put a lot of miles on it, but it seemed like a pretty much just get in and drive vehicle, which uh, now we know that it is because I've seen it driving all around. It's all around town. It's going by here. Haven't heard anything other than the AC might have a small leak, but they just charge it up and it's fine, so... And it's not hot anymore here up in Maine. It's uh, cooling right down. So that's it. A lot of you uh, begged and begged in the comments, you know, that you didn't want me to kill that thing. And uh, like I said, I didn't care either way. But uh, against my better judgment these days, went off to a new home. As you can also see, well, the obvious is 
the Suburban, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, see the old RV is not sitting in its in its spot in its grave sinking into the asphalt like it was all winter and spring and half a summer but um, yeah the old story with that is uh, if you remember I pulled the turbo 400 out of it because it was uh, slipping and I sent it to a guy to have it rebuilt and he said couple of weeks turbo 400 no problem complete rebuild all together with parts and labor about 400 bucks so I brought it to him and then he started getting some parts ordered and I said well you want some money for the parts and he said yeah I'd appreciate that so I went over and I just said you know what I'm just gonna pay the the whole 400 I got it in my pocket here you go let me know when it's done well four months later two weeks turns into four months um, very sore subject uh, whatever excuses whatever reasons came up things come up in life and uh, whatever happened I kept checking in on it trying not to bug them too much about it and uh, you know just thing after thing but long story short finally <clears throat> we're getting into you know like I said you know most of the summer going away the family's after me I mean not after me but just kinda you know when are we gonna drive this thing you know when are we gonna go camping when are we going to be able to use it? And uh, a lot of other things I wanted to do to it, but just that transmission just got in the way, and uh, I just wanted to get that back in and get it going before I did much else. And it turned into, you know, getting a bunch of stuff done before camping to uh, just taking way too long. And um, anyway. Finally, a guy called me up one day and said, yeah, he said, it's going to be done today. So, went over, picked it up. Next day, I got right out here and uh, crawled right under there. As you know, my back is pretty much junk these days and uh, hard for me to do a lot of stuff, but... It's one of those things I had to get done. You gotta, I gotta get under there. I gotta get that transmission in, so we can at least go camping a couple times, if that, before the season ends. I mean, uh, we're our, we were already into August, so I came out, got it up in there. Didn't go get the, you know, didn't use the correct transmission jack. Just used the old floor jack. Balanced it on there by myself, no help. Um, ended up dropping the, the transmission, moved off the jack, landed on my shoulder, and uh, made my pain even worse. So that was added on to everything. Um, ended up having to uh, scream and yell until my wife heard, came outside, and she uh, pushed the jack back under it and got it got it stable on there and then we I had her kind of hold the jack and I got it up in there got it bolted in anyway got everything on uh, the guy full rebuild from front to back he said um, brand new torque converter so I got it all in and added some fluid and boom right into gear seemed pretty good Took it for a ride, you know, and burped out the air and filled it with fluid, and, you know, a couple times added a quart here, a quart there. Finally got it full. Drove it around a little bit. And then was planning on taking it somewhere, either to go camping or just uh, put some miles on it. And then I had uh, 
little emergency business I had to take care of and I had to go out of town for a little bit so that was that was a plus um, so yeah enough babbling on about that but basically at this point haven't put many miles on it but have uh, taken it camping a couple of times to relatively close places around not too far and uh, just so we could you know we could get some camping in and have some fun and to me it seems like reverse is not quite right in the thing uh, when it's cold it just doesn't seem to um, go right into reverse like it should um, it drives I mean it goes down the road good it shifts it shifts different uh, you might have put a different shift kit in it I don't know but uh, it seems like it revs up a little higher um, before it shifts to me but definitely shifts good no slippage or anything like that but like I said reverse to me just doesn't seem quite right but what are you gonna do at least I'm camping and uh, that's it that's that just gonna have to uh, put some more miles on it and see what happens so you know in those in those four months of you know waiting for that transmission and uh, as it got nicer out it was just uh, really bearing down on me you know just seeing that camper sit there and not be able to use it and uh, the situation I was in is I could not you know it did it wouldn't do any good to uh, you know it wasn't gonna do me any good to start you know getting all angry and going after the guy and saying you know what the hell you know but you know you, you, you want to you know you want it just because it's so frustrating that, you know, why why did it take this long? But anyway, seeing that sit there and then the Suburban sitting in the garage on the dollies all apart. It was like, you know, you know, when are we going to drive this? When can we drive the Suburban? When, you know, and it's, um, it just, it really, uh. I really started to get um, discouraged with everything, and uh, I had to, I had to get something done. You know, I had to, I had to just do something. So I, I needed some sort of victory. So I just decided I'm going to go out there, and you know what? I had a lot of plans for the suburban. As far as you know, you, you always think you know you want to. You know, I wanted to pull the engine out, freshen it up, do other things, you know, um, do a lot of stuff. And it just turned into now, you know, it's nice out and, you know, it's not going to be a winter driver anymore up here. And uh, I just, I got to get it going and I got to drive it, so... So I got all the rust fixed on it, you know, um, fix the rod up here, you saw I welded in that uh, quarter panel piece down there to fix that, we got uh, brand new fenders on the front, um, that took care of all the rust. You know the main stuff, and uh, you can see hood's not going down all the way because I need new hinges. Um, basically, got the main stuff done. Uh, big thing was on the roof. They it had roof racks before, which I wish it still did, but. Some kid ripped them off, threw them away. So there was still holes up there that were just kind of silicone. So I uh, finished off the roof, you know, some fiberglass and stuff like that. Smoothed it all down. Um, and 
just hosed her with the old semi-gloss black give it that satin black I mean there's there's spots you know I mean I just got sick of it I got sick of sanding um, there's so many layers of paint on this thing that you know I just wasn't going to keep on wasting my life away sanding on this thing anymore uh, a lot of hours in it as it was so basic tune up and stuff fluid change um, cleaned up some wiring as you can see no inner fenders don't care um, wasn't even gonna bother don't really drive it too much you know in the in the heavy rain or anything anyway um, just you know cruise it around on the nice days but even if it does rain a little water ain't gonna hurt nothing um, I wasn't too sure what I was going to do about the battery and you know not having the inner fender in there and stuff and the other the other battery tray was rotted out and uh, I ended up the the actual battery tray brand new was like twenty dollars online but the support was like almost forty that went under it so I said you know what I'll buy the tray for twenty but I ain't paying that for the support so I just, uh, as you can see, you know, down there, that's still from where the battery over the years leaked the acid down and rusted it out, so I cut most of it out. That's where the inner fender would actually bolt on, but anyway, took some metal and my good old welder and just uh, made my own little battery mount. It's nice and solid. Still got the uh, factory style hold down, and uh, it sits right there. I was gonna, you know, relocate it to the back and mount it back there and run all the cable, but you know, just uh, just wanted to get it going and uh, be able to drive it, and that's what I'm doing. Tapper. So it's got headers now. Always wanted to uh, get headers on this thing over the years. But it's got uh, it's got the glass packs on there like it was always meant to be. And uh, also that latest video you seen, I was talking about the new, I went to the new scrapyard, uh, a little bit of a ride. So the guy that I was going to down here that had the scrapyard that was kind of half closed, half not, that I would go and take a picture of the scale and weigh myself pretty much and go get paid. Um, he was uh, paying very little anyway, but it was five minutes down the street so he's uh last time I went there is uh about a week ago and he told me he pretty much has sold the place and uh the final paperwork's being done and it's no longer going to be a scrapyard it's going to be medical marijuana growing in indoors so 
Uh, it's a big thing, especially up here. So he's selling out. Wants nothing more to do with scrap metal or cars or nothing like that. So he's just going to have a uh, company come down and crush everything in his yard, get take all of it. And uh, that's the end of that. So not only do I lose, you know, kind of a nice thing. I mean, it's right down the road. And, you know, it was it was kind of cool to just be able to go there and you know, uh, take a look around and go through this, the junk and, you know, just drop something off and go get my money. I didn't even have to deal with anyone, but, um, not only that, but he also took cars with no titles, uh, up here, it's, uh, 2001 and newer, you must have a title, uh, for pretty much any junkyard, even the guy that, buys the cars that I bring sometimes uh that buys the cats off me he needs a title absolutely for you know O one and and newer but um this guy down here would take them didn't care the company he was giving them to was just crushing them and throwing them on a truck and that was it so didn't care about titles so that was nice whenever I got a car you know some people couldn't get rid of cars because none of the other junk guys wanted them because uh, there was no title, so I would be the one that, oh yeah, I can take it, you know, without a title, no problem, so. So that one uh, yard I went to yesterday, I just took a, a small load of uh, light iron that I had been collecting around here, you know, just people around town drop stuff off to me or have me come pick up stuff and you know, you try to keep that the local people happy because um, there's a, a lot of junk cars still in this town that uh, I'm waiting to get my hands on. So I don't want to refuse somebody that calls, you know, and says, come pick up my wash machine. And what am I going to do? Say, nope, not coming because the price sucks. You know, price of metal's down. I'm not going to pick it up. Not going to do that because then what's that person going to do? The next time they have, you know, something to get rid of, maybe a car, maybe, you know, they're going to say, I ain't calling that asshole, you know. He told me, nah, he told me the price was down, so he ain't picking it up. So, I just keep on going, and, uh, yeah, seems like everyone I talked to about the yard closing down here, everyone said the same thing about, they, are, they always mention this place that I went to yesterday, um, right away so so yeah the place seems pretty good um obviously i did not make a did not get rich yesterday but um hopefully the prices of metal are going to go up i mean everywhere else i think the nationwide average is is a hundred a ton for light but up here you're so far away from you know, the boats and the water, like where they, you know, ship the, the metal off and stuff. Um, the further away you get like that, the the less it's worth. Um, so, that's what's going on there. Um, but hopefully it does go up more. Um, I mean, I got, at least I got 40 a ton there. That guy down the street was... Uh, paying me 30 a ton for a while there, and, uh, it was not, not adding up to much, but, um, so, it seems like, uh, my scrap, you know, my light, my number one, and, uh, whatever other stuff I get, you know, copper, aluminum, stuff like that, I'm going to be taking to that place, uh, it's not a bad, you know, it's, like I said, it's about an hour ride, but if you take through the woods, the back roads, about an hour and a half, you know, it takes a little chunk out of the day, but when you got nothing else going on for a day, you can, you know, kind of take a ride and maybe, um, you know, you get down to that area, there's a lot of stores that we don't have up here, so if you need supplies or whatever, you know, you can go to, go to a store or something that you need to, so it makes the trip worth it, and, uh, and then, of course, I got the other guy that's you know, um, another, another 45 minutes, 
from uh, the yard I was at yesterday is that guy that has a small junkyard that buys the cars complete for more money. And uh, also, he cut the cats off and he pays you separate for that and he buys batteries and wheels. So, And he's, a, he's like a core buyer, so he's paying more than a uh, scrapyard would pay. That place, um, the new place, as far as cars go, they're, they're not into it uh, far enough yet. Um, they just started accepting cars with fluids in them. I mean, uh, when I first moved up here, I remember calling them. So I called all the scrapyards, and they told me that you had to drain every fluid out of the car and take the gas tank out and take the tires out. I mean, it was just crazy. So I noticed they had a sign up that, that now they accept cars with fluids. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There was, uh, I only saw a few cars in the pile there, so... They can't be doing too much, so I I, I won't be bringing, uh, I don't think I'll be bringing cars to them, plus, you know, you got to have a title, too, you know, of course, with them. And the, even on the older stuff that doesn't, if you don't have the title, they want this big bill of sale and everything to go along with it, so uh, that won't really be happening, but um, that's what's going to have to be for, for scrapping. i got no choice. So I was a little bit spoiled at first with that yard down there, but now you just, with the prices so low, it just ain't worth it anyway. So I have to take the ride. That's how it is. So there you go. RV's going. Suburban's going on the road. Uh, farm truck's doing good. You know, no problem there. Um, hauling scrap. Dooley's been hauling, burning more gas than making money, but, you know, hey, haul's good. Um, fortunately, I've gotten a few cars, but non-runners, totally stripped down. Um, nothing to really show, nothing to uh, have any fun with, but... So, for what it's worth... I apologize for the long delay between videos, but hopefully this is going to be a, I mean, it's going to be a long video, but appreciate you watching if you sit through it and, uh, you know, caring about what's going on, and that's pretty much it. It's, uh, we're into September, before you know it, you're putting a lot of stuff away and getting ready for the snow, so... do appreciate you watching and uh you know nothing's changed you know as far as you know you know what happens on the streets because you know what what could happen and did it did it happen were you did you see something maybe familiar I'm, i don't know maybe were you seeing things or was it true was it all in your head? Because you might want to keep an eye out. Because I, I could see you on the streets.